Good morning, welcome to Natasha Makes Only I Am Not Making today. Well, I am Natasha, but I'm not making. You're pointing. I'm pointing. You're pointing. pointing. Natasha pointing. <laughs> that could be a good little... Oh, could we do pointing Thursday or something? That could be quite good where you just sit in the chair there and point. I'm, I don't know how much, how many legs that, how much legs that would have. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Can, can I know I... that you like to point. Everybody, it's John Cole Morgan, for Hello. those of you that don't know. Good morning, good morning, good how morning. Are how are you, sir? Um, I've realised a flaw in my preparation. Which is? You can't show the kids. Oh. <laughs> There's any wafting of fabric and this is going everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Should uh, we do it reverse? We're going to have to. But can I just say, Santa is coming. I don't care if it's January or whatever, is Santa is coming. The Christmas sparkle! Uh, John, I'm so happy. I oh, see you say Christmas, I, I say just decadence. It's just gorgeous and especially... Well, first of all, Lisa Chandler has to be spoken of. Her fabric's amazing. She has created this Melba collection with this gorgeous... I don't know if you can quite see the little fan in there. We'll show that afterwards but in the, the key. But the quilting fan. The quilting <laughs> you fan. Have, you have the quilted quilting beautiful fan. fan. Yeah. I just saw it and I was like, yep, I've got to do that. So oh. here's the thing. We are um, the place in the UK to get Lisa Chandler fabrics. Okay. Uh, Lisa and I have worked together now for a couple of years. Cracker, mm, a couple of years. years. Lovely. More than two years. Um, thanks to John's introduction. And you know when you say, oh, I've got someone that you really need to meet. You'll really love them. And you sort of she go. looked at me and went, no, I won't. Actually, we did. You we did. love each other. Absolutely. No, no, I know, but you did look at me and go, no, I yeah, won't. Yeah, I know, I know, just because. <laughs> no, I won't. Just because when people say that, you're like. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, you've got something in common. You'll really get on. You'll can like, I just say, told yeah. you so. I oh, know, you can told say you it so. as much as you like. Told I don't you mind. So. In this situation, yes. 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 And yes. Um, and so we have become, well, we are. The UK main distributors you for are? Lisa Chandler Fabrics. And to celebrate such a fabulous fact, check out the website because all our cut to order is on a bit of a cracking deal. That's all I'm going to say. Um, www.natashamakes.com. And for those of you. Lisa, L E E S A. Just type that in the search bar, it'll all pop up. To be honest, if you, the issues under our designers, you can do it in there and sort all that. See, and also, I'm terrible because I'm quite lazy, well, and I just know. I go into the search bar and just type the name, and there they all are. But you see, Gemma Lala will also oh, have um, put yep. it all in today's show page, yep. so it's all there. It's all there because she does all that. She's like a magic elf. But the great thing is, there's so many ways to look for it. Well, there are, and then you can't fail to find it. Never. Um, or if you do, like us, you're quite blind. It's Gemma's fault. It's not Gemma's. We can't blame her for everything. <laughs> Good grief, man. Um, so, we have had a lot of fun with this quilt. This is your Christmas quilt. I don't think it needs to be just well, for Christmas. it doesn't, no. But it's, for me, Christmas starts in January. So, you know. It could be any time. I can safely put this on my sofa in March and not have a problem. It's true. Whereas these colourways, this colourway, oh my gosh, I'm going to show so you. so different. Um, yeah, completely different. So different. But this would look beautiful in my daughter's bedroom. It's so, so, so Because, you know, soft. I had to buy her... Um, the rug. The rug after yep. your party. Yep. Um, it is this shade of pink. Oh, perfect. Whereas a lot of girly pinks are much brighter they and are. garish. But this is that soft pink. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And this design, you can see there the fan design on Lisa's design. It just... That is why the quilting pattern had to be that. So the... For those of you that don't know, the metallic is the last, um, the last to go on when the fabric is printed. It's the last screen, so that's why it's always so bright and so vibrant. Um, we don't shout about it enough. The quality of Lisa's fabric is second to none. There are only a few mills in the world that print the way mm. that Lisa's are printed. And the th what I love about it is that she's had this continuity with the same mill and the same designers oh, yeah. and the same people for oh, yeah. decades it's been brilliant and so you know and um <clears throat> she and she's you know she's very fussy if something doesn't if particular in a good way <laughs> look if you've something got doesn't to be, come up the to problem scratch, is you she have send to be she will reject exactly it. but you and have to be fussy that. in this in this industry you Do. have to be to get the quality that you want um that is how she keeps her reputation and we absolutely adore her her fabrics are gorgeous they're timeless that's mm. what i really love about them and you can keep getting them which yes. i love because yes. how many times have you made a project fall in love with the fabric look for it again it's gone mm. 
which is great because, you know, once you've got it, you've got it. But when you don't have it and you run out, you want Very to make upset. sure you can get it. But with Very her, upset. you've got this continuity, which is and fabulous. Today you can get it cut to order. We carry a lot of Lisa. A lot. So we do carry a lot. So do check out the website because it's all cut to order there with a discount today. What, what about the patterns? You haven't mentioned all her gorgeous patterns. Wow, oh, she does. And this is the beautiful because thing. Because she's designing her own fabric, she then designs her own patterns. And so they work with the pattern repeats and things like that. She is so clever. So also have a look at her beautiful, beautiful patterns. We've made uh, many of them on the show. as well, you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I don't know if you can see. You can, We've almost. Got almost. But it's just that this fabric is my favourite of hers, the new colourway of yeah, that. Yeah, we've sold oh, out of it. We've got to get some gorgeous. more. gorgeous. So um, we I'm not surprised you've that. sold out. It's beautiful. And we did have a lot but you know we've we've we demo these things on the regular so um and if you've if you're buying a pattern then the chances are we've demoed it and you can find it exactly. on the website and yeah. the great thing is you've got the tutorial if you find a pattern Gemma's put all the dates of the youtube tutorials on each one she's a clever she's very good that yeah. way she really um is. so john so i apologize for doing this this is not the way you normally do it that's all right but that block in itself to took me about half an hour to lay out because, Which you know, one that, be? that one there. That this one. Is, now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you Go and ahead. simply say mm -hmm. you don't have to do this block, okay? Why? Hey, why? But that's like the Look, best There's bit. nothing wrong with this block. There is right. nothing wrong. So it is... In South Africa, when you were studying education, you had standard grade and higher grade, and higher grade was for the very, very clever people. Right. I would call this a higher grade block. Okay. Because that becomes 10 inches. Oh. And Ooh. that's a lot of pieces. Right. And so what would you do instead? Well, you could continue by just making another one of these to go into the corner, and you can just have your Irish chain going all the way along. You can make it as it is. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a case of, I do know, I showed this to Joe and Sylvia, and Sylvia, I love her to pieces. She just looked at me and went, <laughs> you're an idiot. I can't do that. But it's just, it's the design works with the beautiful little snowflakes in the corner. It really works. And you can tell by the colorways. This is the with the black background. You can see how beautiful it is. You get that 3D effect. Yeah. But I am aware that this is not, this is not easy. This is a very small flying geese, a very small four patch. I get that. So if you did want to just make one of these, that would pop in there beautifully. You can see how simply it would go. So that is an option for you. But I do think, if, give it a go. Give it a go. If it doesn't give work, it a go. you've got a cushion. And yeah. if it doesn't work really badly and you don't like your mother-in-law, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but Maybe. I love this colorway as well. You can see the difference between the two is extraordinary. It just works really, really, really well. And to get a little bit ahead of the curve, I have made some of the central section there and the metallic is not quite as bright as you can see with the studio lights so you're not going to have light like that in your home but you can just tell the colors work so beautifully in that it's just so i love it it's very very love soft it, love it, love it, love we it. use the it is very soft it yeah is soft. we use the bumbleberries for the silver um background really and for the uh, black one behind you we've got a black bumbleberries to give that texture it and these are often used as a textured fabric very much um, and it just it works an absolute treat and what i like about this is that you've got space for your quilting in there you know it's not too busy no it's got space to rest space to look it's got movement yeah, it's lovely. But th that was why I did it, was that a lot of the quilts that we do nowadays are filled to capacity with blocks, yeah. which is gorgeous, and I love that. But just having that freedom to be able to pop these fans in, or free motion, or you just create your own synergy on that. I'm not quite sure you can see the quilt. There we go. You can see the gold on there as well, because I've quilted it in a beautiful gold. And it just worked. I think it just works really, really well being able to have the option of having that or not, or just leaving it empty. And if you don't want the empty space, you've got other blocks you can fill it up with. Absolutely. So there we go. So what now, I thought I would do is we would start with the relatively easy, the intermediate, and then I won't have time to finish this block because it is really complicated to do, but I will certainly start it and show you the elements that you're looking for. But we're going to start with this block over here in the pattern. I think I've called this block one, and it's so, so easy to do. We are doing four half square triangles, and all I do whenever I do half square triangles, I put them all on top of each other, and I make sure I've got them all facing the right way. I then slide over to my sewing machine, the lovely DX, 
take my shoe off because I can't do it with shoes on. Can you not? Nope. Do you drive with shoes? I'm not. You have to. I never used to, but you have to. It's law in this country. Mm, I know. Right. Needle up, needle down. Come on. Do you chain piece these, John? I do. Yeah. So normally when I make this quilt, well, I've made this quilt twice now. I literally just sit with all of the flying gear. The <laughs> you pressed the back of the pedal, didn't you? <laughs> John's face. What is happening here? So on the DX, I am a you creature program... who absolutely despises change of any kind. Oh, bless you. Sorry. And any form of not knowing what anything is. You must see when I get a software update. I had one of those a little while ago with regards to my computer. And I lost Word, EQ8, <laughs> EQ7, the Everything. internet. Half your world. Every single aspect of my life disintegrated with oh. one update. I was so charmed, so happy. <laughs> um, no, so on the DX, you can program the foot pedal to do extra things. Yes. So I've got mine programmed so that when you press the heel of the foot, um, it cuts, cuts the thread, which you just found out. Indeed. I just forgot. Now the great thing about doing sewing and standing up is that you get a really good stretch of these muscles over here. <laughs> and I'm going to just check I've turned the iron on. If I haven't, it's not a problem. Oh, is it plugged in? Of course it's not. <laughs> <laughs> really not I'm a problem. Go with no. <laughs> uh, yeah. We are safety first here. It is there one of go. the things that I really do panic about. What? I've driven home before now from going somewhere to make sure I've turned the iron off. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the time. That's why you've got to have one of those irons that switches off on their own. So, we Boy, are gonna, we're now going to just press these. Now, with these, I prefer to press my seams open. Could you, you do move not it along need a little to, bit with pleasure. With, you've, I think we've moved the cutting mat a little bit. We have. That was me, 100% me. No, by now I come in and move everything. Yeah, I know. You should know this by now. But it was to try and get all three blocks on. So are you... Oh, okay, it might need a minute just to warm up. Yep. Um, are you... How are you doing these um, seams open? I yeah, press my open. seams open. I always. prefer to. Always. Yeah. Do you? I always try to, especially with half square triangles, because I just think you get a, a cleaner finish when you put them together. Okay. But everybody is different. There is no right or wrong. And I will, I'll be honest and say some days I don't press them open. I press them to the side. It's just depending on how I'm feeling. I feel that when I'm going to be doing a demonstration, I should do it the way I would normally do it. That's correctly. fair enough. That is fair enough. So this block, you're going to make four of them. And most of the blocks you make four of, it's just one in the middle, you make one of, which is quite nice. Yes, yes. Is your reservoir meant to pop? How do you mean? A little pop, pop. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just boiling. Perfect, just checking. I'm going to say yes. Yes. Before we end up with a panic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I um, I bought a cheaper iron for at home. I really regret it. That iron is fabulous. It's so heavy and it just... You do need the heavy. It really does press so nicely. Now, given I put my instructions away, I'm just double checking I'm doing <laughs> this right and I'm not. Does it matter if you did it the other way? I, in this quilt, yes, because you can do them opposite. You can see in the middle, you can do them differently. But I quite like the fact that it's making a movement and it's going in the same direction, having them go in the same direction. There is no right or wrong. If you want to do them the other way, that's absolutely fine. And now it's literally just a nine patch. So you're going to sew these three together, these three together, these three together, and then... And are you, what are you going to do with your seams? Again, seams open. Really? I do with these. That's fair enough. And if this, to be fair, it depends on how much of a rush I'm in. Because on... We've got 
real rush on. If I turn this round, mm -hmm. hopefully not knocking all my pieces off the table, you can see I have tried to make sure that my seams are pressed open. One of them did fail. So it's just a case I do prefer having them open in most cases over here, you can okay. see. But it's been screwed up in a bag, so it might not quite look as though <laughs> it was open. <clears throat> so that's that one. Now, when you are doing the nine patch, it does help. Now, one thing just to show, if I could ask you to just go into a close up. Oh, yes. When you do blocks, you will end up with occasions where your half square triangle doesn't quite measure the same size as your square. Right. What I always say to people is don't move it to one side because that means on this side you, your seam may fail. What I do is I say center the half square triangle on the square so you're evening the gap all the way around. Right. Of course, obviously at this point you check you've cut your square the correct size because if anything like me, you've probably cut it the wrong way. Mm. But it's just a case of I always split the difference so I don't have the big weight being all on one seam or the gap being on one seam. Personally, that's what I prefer. Okay. And there we go. And then when I make sure that I'm doing this and laying it out. Do you always come back and lay it always, out? Always, every yeah. single time. And even then I get it wrong. Oh, I know. We it, all it, do. Yeah. We all yeah. do. It just, for me, I just find it easier being able to make sure roughly that it is lined up and ready to go. It's amazing how they can move and spin, isn't it? Just between there yep. and the sewing machine. It doesn't feel quite right. It's like how, what, how, how, what, how. Okay. And I think it's always good to make sure that you do check that your pieces are the same size and if they're not, check why. And be kind to yourself. I've shown you how you split the difference if something's wrong, but I do think it's all, always important to just go back and have a look. Is my seam too big? Did I cut it too big? Where was the problem? So that next time when you make the same block, you know where you are. Perfect. So now I've got my three layers. And I take them over to the iron. I'm gonna have to take my shoes off. Care for the pins though, John. You know I drop pins. Pins everywhere. and needles and everything. All over. If the I shop. do say any unpleasant words, I apologise in advance. <laughs> it's simply a very sharp no. pin that Natasha's left for me has pierced me. I'm not sure I can sew left-handed. <laughs> not so pressed. Why are you pressing left-handed? I was doing? trying to be open my seam with the other hand. Oh. So. Here you can see by doing that my seam has closed because being because uh, I do so many quilts long arming mm. I do you it, there's always a little crunch when you go over six or seven seams or uh, six or seven layers of fabric so for me I always prefer to make sure that I'm keeping it as thin as possible right and by pressing your seams open you do end up with that you, you know you've got a little less fabric there yeah it's yeah. not look so uh, quilting machines will go through um, several pieces of leather it's not a problem it's just a case of occasionally you may end up with a slip stitch or whatever and it's just a case of what works for you that's the thing isn't it it's these are all advisory exactly and well some people are terribly um particular about it which is a good thing you know that's fine but i think if somebody doesn't want to do it that way leave them be <laughs> they know what they do it it's their quilt you don't like it you don't have to sleep under it would you sleep under this one this i'm actually i'm very excited because i want to put this in my living room all year round oh, and yeah, every now and then lovely. just pick it up and start singing christmas carols because <laughs> <laughs> andrew loves that type of thing does he well in my head he does <laughs> right okay okay so there we go you can check now before you put anything together i am trying to make sure that i am having everything being semi-directional with the fans in the middle and i'm now just checking dump 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 
and we just sew these three together. Now the points you're trying to meet to hit are just there and just there, which is where your half square triangle meets the next piece of fabric. And by pushing these open, if we go there, if you don't mind, ma'am. I do not mind. There we go. You can see it just nestles beautifully on top of each other. But when you fold this back, you can see where the background fabric hits the pink. That's the point you want to hit. And if you don't get it right, that's okay. You'll get it next time. I'm just laughing at our matching rotary cutters there. Sorry? Yeah, I'm just laughing at our matching rotary cutters. We've actually had to label them. It was like going back to school, wasn't it? Well, I knew I'd come. <laughs> I knew I had You'd packed my rotary somewhere. cutter. <laughs> right, let's see. Did I get them? Ah, oh, that's what we're looking oh, for. Oh, that's the sound so of Happy that John. that is perfect. That one's not quite as perfect, but I'm okay with that. I can live with that. So we're now just going to sew the bottom half on, or the bottom third onto there. And off we go. So this is effectively just three blocks. Yep. Four. Four. Oh, the middle one. The middle one's on its own. Oh. Have we laid out the middle one? Are we doing the middle one? Nice. But of course, because I want my fans to go the right way, that'll be oh. the right way up. Are you, now, did you do multi-directional fans? I did all the directionals the same mm -hmm. until I put the block together and put these two wrong way around. <laughs> I like to think that just means that it can be thrown exactly. over. Oh, crikey. Um, thrown over the... Um, the sofa. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And the great thing is with Lisa's fabric is that if you are worried about it being directional, what you can do is make it directional so that all four ways of having the quilt will have some of the fabric the right way around. Because that way then it just does put your fabric in a different way sorry however you lay your your quilt then you've always got it the right way around in in some of the blocks and I'll show you in two seconds when I'm finished pressing that seam what I mean it looks like fireworks as well I know that you say um, well on the on the one on the back wall I, you see for me that's kind of fireworks yeah and then in the silver and the pink. It's just so different. Yeah. So what I meant by that is that if you have your fans that way over there, that way over there, that way over there, and that way over there, however you look at the quilt, yeah, you've the always got the fabric yeah. in the right direction. Yeah. So yeah, for me, that works. So now we've, I've already made one of these already. I've made three of them already. So I'm going to put these to one side, but obviously these two need to be sewn together. So. I like to do things as I go along, okay. so I'm just going to put these together now. But before I do, check it's going in the right direction. That way. You will check it on your pattern. You will check it on your pattern. John you obviously won't have this there <laughs> waiting for you. Um, John, however, has uh, not got his pattern with him today. It's always the way. Yeah. It'd be far too organised if I had it all going. Gemma wouldn't know what to do with herself if I had everything all organised weeks in advance. I hear her cackling with laughter saying chance will be a fine thing. <laughs> She'd love it. Now again, this section is done separately at the end of the pattern. I'm just skipping steps to show you where we are and how we're getting on. Okay, so the bit that we've just made now is this bit over here. Nice. So you can see that there. Okay, and I've already made these nine blocks ahead of it. Next, we're going to make this block over here. Oh, hang on. Which one? Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to rotate my mat simply because this is a lot of stuff in one area <laughs> and I'm going to make a mistake. Whee! 
Right. Now, equally, I'm going to lay this down because I know that these are the correct way round. Right. Only so that I know which way round my these fans need to be because what it'll be is that'll be going and joining me over here. So if I slide this this way. So that is going to go on here. So you can see my fans are facing the correct way to go on over there. No, they're not. No, they're not. Oh, it's the one you've just sewn on. No, that's right. The it is upside down. <laughs> bear with, Caller. Bear with. What have I done? Oh, that's it's quite important to get this the right way around. Well, look, I'm just being pedantic <laughs> because I want my little fans in the right direction. You don't need to be. But the thing is, if they're not right for this one, they're going to be right for one of the exactly. top ones. It exactly. doesn't matter, does it? Right. I'm not even going to think about it anymore. That's how it's going <laughs> together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make eight half square triangles like that. Like that. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Obviously, my device would take that moment to crash. Of course it would. And not let me press any buttons. So we're going to make... Go on. There you go. There you eight go, of these. So I'm now... I've put that in my block. So I'm going to... I've already made one. So I'm going to now do the remaining seven. So like I normally like to do, I'm going to put these on top of each other and then just chain piece them all the way through. But again, you can see I'm just pulling them out of this section here. And it's a nice, easy, simple way of making sure that everything stays in place. I figured out which direction they need to go. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you know those no, moments where you're sitting thinking about it and then you get the answer in your head. I do that with maths. And when I'm under pressure, I can't, I can't do it. You know, if I try and work something out on a show and then everyone goes, didn't you used to teach maths? Yeah, it's just being under pressure. I can't do it. People don't say that to you, do they? They do. Oh, they do. John. They're very they brave. <laughs> yeah. Oh, crikey. What's happening? Press the wrong button, John. Wasn't me. Press the wrong button. No, it can't be you. You are not pressing buttons, are you, over there? But I will say this quilt is such a nice thing just to sort of sit down to. I do agree that the, the more advanced block, you can't really have your Amazon on in the background or your Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus. You do need to concentrate a bit What's more. But it's Hulu? A, oh, it's my American iTunes account. How, it's basically how, what, the, what is it's that? the same as, don't even look it up. Okay. You don't need it. No. You don't need it. But what is it? It's just basically, it's, it's a bit like Disney Plus, but you get more American shows. Not that we need any more American shows, to be fair, between what we get on Prime and Disney Plus. Uh, uh, are you a big Disney fan, John? Mm, possibly. <laughs> I'm a huge TV fan. I love all things TV. I am absolutely addicted to all of the Real Housewives. I just can't imagine how people can be so absolutely vile to each other and others and still be so rich. Yeah, it kind of doesn't feel fair, does it? Well, it's not about... I just don't get it. It's just the whole franchise is about how awful you can be to each other. And I just wish that we could have a community where you were encouraged to be nice to each other. But you're watching it, so you're encouraging it. I'm not. I, I'm 100% <laughs> part of the problem. I am not excusing that on any level. But like it's. They say if you want, if you want to hear, um, you know, happy news, don't listen to the miserable news, and then they'll have to change. Exactly, and that's the whole point of it. But you know, and I, I myself sat and watched. I don't know if you, you've probably never watched any of this. But there's a most recent one of the um, Real Housewives of Dubai, and every single episode have I know that I know you're staring at me, shaking your head, going, "What are you rabbiting on about?" But you look at them and they're all arguing. Oh, you're bankrupt. Oh, I've made ten million dollars in one year, and you're like, "Why the hell do you need a TV show then? If you've made that much money, do you really need to be doing this?" Must be really bored. Well, I can assure that. you now, you wouldn't be seeing me if I made ten million dollars. Well, I suppose she probably made it because she was on telly. So I don't know. <laughs> And there's the rub. 
Well, yes. I did think to myself, the Real Housewives of Quilting could be quite funny. Maybe we did it as a YouTube thing where we change the culture and just make it that everybody's nice to each other. Well, Genuinely nice, nice not other. just doing it for the TV show. And state. also possibly just wander around in their slippers and make it actually real and uh, don't get out of our pyjamas till lunchtime. So basically we're changing this show and just being in our pyjamas. I mean, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. I can do that. That's how it always used to go. When we, um, when we used to have the studio um, from our old house during lockdown, um, when we were allowed to work from home, we... Um, How could I forget? Yeah, I know. Walking in and your daughter looking at me going, Mommy, I don't like that man! Get him out of my house! <laughs> Mommy! Who's that man? I felt like it's I was... like Punch and Judy. <laughs> so I, was, I was absolutely horrified. I didn't know what to do and I was terrorising your poor child just by being alive. Yeah, but you have to realise <laughs> that um, for more than half of her life she was in lockdown. That is very true. And not really seeing anybody at all. That is true. So, you know, to suddenly have a slightly flamboyant man in her house. What do you mean slightly? Oh, How sorry. dare you? How <laughs> very dare you? <laughs> right, what am I doing? That is right, but they go that way. You don't need to get your fabric directional. Not all of you have an OCD problem like I do. <laughs> Right. But um, the point was that, yeah, I would probably get changed for the show five minutes before we went to air. Yeah. And be in my pyjamas the rest of the time. I can attest to such activity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now we are at the point now where I understand this now may not look like the block in your pattern, but it is correct. We've just moved everything around. Okay. You can see this is the block we're making. Mm -hmm. But the other way. All I'm doing is having it point in. Okay. So that's correct. So. This is row one, two, three, four, five. You just now start piecing these together. Now, this does get a little bit annoying. <laughs> no, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you because look at that. Hang this on, is where you on. get annoying. Now, if you have time, square them to the size of your square. If you have the time, please do that. If you have all the like time, I like that. I get my rotating cutting mat exactly. Out oh no, I love it. And I spin. I but I'm not really quite sure it. we have time to no. do these now. So all you do is, if you don't do that, split the difference. So you've got a little bit extra there, and you've got a little bit extra there. Okay. Okay. So at that we point, you check there. Cell rotating cutting mats. Oh, those rotating cutting mats are on my life. I love them. And I do enjoy them a lot. And then, you know, if you don't have any sewing to do, use them as a lazy Susan. It's great for your snacks. Oh, that one's perfect. I don't need to worry about that one. John, do you snack and quilt? I need to lose another 60 pounds. Okay. So I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> I, I move and have a snack. I move and have a snack, and, you know, so. Right. This is where it does get a little bit annoying because you do want to do little bit by little bit by little bit because the number of times I've made this block and ended up with that one being the wrong way around, sewn it all together and then realised that I'm wrong. Oh, it no. does get a little bit frustrating. So, But it's just, you, the way that you're doing it though is perfect because you've exactly. got your cutting mat right next to you. So do a little bit, put it back. A little bit, put it back. A little bit, exactly. put it back. And just keep checking yourself. It's very, very important. And the thing is, it's also just take your time with it because getting it perfect, you just feel so good that it's all worked out well. And if it doesn't go perfect, that's okay too. Natasha makes our wonderful unpickers. <laughs> we really do, actually. We really do. They're very good. Along with lots of other things. Rummage through our haberdashery department because we do sell all sorts of goodies in there. Oh, you're not on a close up, John. We can see your face. <laughs> That's all right. You just look at something and think, Have I killed the sewing machine? Have I killed the sewing machine? I haven't killed the sewing machine, by the way. So you can see it is working out absolutely fine. So now I'm just going. <laughs> Me. I may be, trust me, trust me, do as I say, not as I do. But fundamentally, this is, um, this is squares and triangles. Exactly. Like there's not, 
you know, and the only thing to watch really with your triangles is just not to pull on the bias, just let your machine take exactly. it through. So if you want to do this with a walking foot so that it's taken yep. through the machine top and bottom the same, then absolutely do that. Um, the other thing is I would always prep my fabric with something like a best press or a flatter, something like, um, that. Something like a starch equivalent spray. I don't use actual starch, but we, we've got um, flatter, which is fabulous. It doesn't catch at the back of your throat, which I like, like some can, and smells We divine. all know what you're talking about. Yeah. There we go. So laying them out, back to laying them out. It really shrinks, doesn't it? It really does. I'm um, just checking I've got these in the right order, and I do. So I just keep putting everything back where it was. Mm. Just It takes that little bit longer, but it does work. Fabulous shirt again today, John. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I do need to please. You know, you've got to aim to please. It's not mine either. It's Andrew's. <laughs> Do you actually own any shirts yourself? Or well, you see the thing, Andrews? it's like when you move in together and you've been together for as long as we have, you just kind of think, oh, do you actually own furniture or do you own it together? Do you own anything together or is it all individual? So I just look at our, at our wardrobe as a communal asset. <laughs> <laughs> Rightly or wrongly, whether Andrew agrees with it or not, it's communal. Does he ever go, um, has he got like a favourite shirt and he goes no. to get it and you've... you've I, I will admit, I will admit he bought a... Did you ever watch um, Schitt's Creek? Oh, I love that show. So yes. David in the show ended yes. up getting... There was a shirt that he wore in the show and the next thing I knew within a few days of it being on air, the shirt appeared... This, um, jumper appeared in the house and I was like oh hello and he looked at me and went that's mine I said nope <laughs> so <laughs> it's the first time he's ever actually gone Been no that's that mine oh really and I've worn it every day since <laughs> oh. was it the big the big like, oversized jumper yeah really uh, no no um that one I, I want desperately but um this was the one with the black seagulls on it I'll wear it next time I come in. Okay. Actually, I've got it in the car. Have you? Only because he mentioned it the other day. What, so you thought you'd uh, borrow it again? Just remind him <laughs> of community of property. <laughs> Is he out the country? No. <laughs> oh, brave. Brave, John. Brave. It's at that point where you just think, have faith, you've got this, you've got this. Are we talking quilt or marriage? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good old Andrew. Oh, he's awesome. I'm a very lucky man. So we haven't said hello to all of our YouTubers or Facebookers. Uh, haven't morning. said hello to? We haven't said hello to all of our viewers, really. Not sort of individually. So he oh, oh, the waving hand. I was hello. waving frantically above my head, but obviously you couldn't see that. No, we couldn't. So good morning. Hello. Thank you very much for tuning in. Because we always say hello to our Facebooks and then I forget our YouTubers. So I'm just going to blanket hello to everyone. And some of you, of course, watch on the website as well. And all I've got to say is, hi. <laughs> hi. Oh, I'm not even on camera yet. <laughs> right, well, I'm so. Looking at you. Hang on. I'm rotating this now. Well, I, mm. John, is something the wrong way around? Glad somebody came to work today. Yeah. That's so that's what we're trying to make. <laughs> that's what we're trying to make, and I think it's worked. So now we just go and put them one on top of each other and go to the iron and press those all open what could possibly go wrong oh you had to say it didn't you i don't know we'll soon find out won't we <laughs> <laughs> so do you so you keep your iron pressing on one as you then tease the next one open. yes um if you I could try not to move my iron at all 
Right, apart because, from off the Yeah, screen. off and on, off and on. <laughs> oh, no, only because a lot of people, when they do this, they will put their iron on and then stretch it. No, 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 no. And Especially I think that's really important that people get out of the habit with quilting and making sure that you're going side to side vigorously, which I understand is something called ironing. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. know. It eludes me. You and me both. You and me both. Oh, I think you're a better wife than I, I am a husband. Well, apart from the fact that I'm divorced, so clearly not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not because of your ironing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's nothing to do with your ironing. Uh, I never iron. So maybe oh God, it is. Maybe I do need to learn to iron. <laughs> it will be brought up at the dinner table tonight. <laughs> I just imagine that I'm going to look at him in the eyes and say, darling, do I need to learn to iron in order to stay married? And he laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> it wasn't cited in the divorce papers as a reason, to be fair. Oh, no, he's already told me I'm too expensive to divorce now. <laughs> <laughs> that makes you a keeper. <laughs> Anybody seen it yet? Anybody seen it yet? What have you done? If you go into the overhead, you'll see it. Oh, we sound coming around the wrong way. Um, pink one should be facing in. Exactly. At the top. Doesn't right. matter how careful you are, you're going to make just a mistake. It spins around. But that's why we just make sure that you just be kind. If you get it wrong, you would tell your friend not to worry. Why would you be unkind to yourself? And it might just be I've got it in the wrong row. It might um, be. Could be. Um, I don't think it is, but. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> you were being so methodical. I was so helpful. Well. I was so hopeful there. Um, we like to call this warts and all sewing because it's Well, honest. I'm glad because <laughs> you'd have been a bit disappointed at <laughs> that point. But it's about the honesty, isn't it, of, exactly. um, of how things really work out. And there isn't one of us who has made a block, sat there very carefully, laid it all out, and then all of a sudden, boom, you've made a mistake. So just be kind and try not to develop a drinking habit. <laughs> Tea only. So, John, in this instance, what would you do about those? Would you unpick oh, them? Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, okay, right. Absolutely. You've got to repair it. Okay. Something like that would just annoy you constantly. I think if there was something that you looked at and you hadn't seen it, um, then fine. But if you've noticed it, then unfortunately anything you do like that, every time you look at the quilt, that's what you're going to look that's at. That's what you're going to see. So, yeah. you know, it is a few minutes of unpicking. Oh, for crying out loud. Moments like this, I then get to the point where I'm thinking, I'm not going to press my seams open. That's a silly <laughs> idea. But then you take time. Perfect. Well, it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got that there. So you can all see, if anybody hasn't seen it, this one's the wrong way around. And I am... Bum, 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 bum. Do you want me to do that? No, I'm all right. Okay. You can tell people really interesting things, though. Well, now, obviously, my mind's gone blank and I can't think of anything interesting at all to tell anyone, ever. John, are we going to make that middle block as well? Uh, no, because I've only got the one of them, and I thought if I did all four blocks, it might be a bit much. But I am going to show people how to do... It's very similar, isn't it's it? It's very to similar to the first block that yeah. we did. Um, all it is is that you're just moving a couple of things slightly. So it's. I just thought that that was relatively simple. If you can do block one and you can do this block, I'm very confident that people will be able to do that block. And the great thing is, it's only one of them. So that is something to be excited about. Now the question is, can you just spin that? 
No, you've got to unpick. Oh, so you've got to unpick both. Both sides, unfortunately. Oh, how very annoying. And I think the worst and most annoying bit is I think I've got my direction of my fabric wrong after oh, all anyway. No! But that's what? fine because I think it's also, it's one of those fun things that you can then look at your quilt and go, oh, I tried so hard to get these the right way around. That's why I just wouldn't. <laughs> Gemma's just popped head into it. Is that fun with a capital F? Yes, all the fun. Such fun. All the fun. That's definitely a Miranda such fun, isn't it? <laughs> Gosh, Miranda. I hadn't heard of her for years. ages. What's she doing now? Don't know. Enjoying the wealth she made in the first round round. Yeah, not not going on housewives of uh... anywhere drastic. <laughs> 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 There's money to be made in comedy, isn't there? I wish I was funnier, or just funny. Oh, I think you're a lot funnier than you think you are. We think you're a lot funnier than you think. Yeah, you but are. you might be just laughing at me, not with me. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't possibly comment. Would That's I fine. say something like that? <laughs> but no, the comedians, they make millions, they don't do. they? Because you think their setups and stuff when they go into all the theatres, it's not, it's not huge. It's not like, you yeah. know, Madonna or anything like that when she does a show. Now. Go on. How's that looking? Like that. Yay, that's the one. Okay. That's so that's monkey. what we're looking for. Badger, any old animal really. Oh, helps if you. Do you know what I saw the other day on my way into work? Mm -hmm. I just remembered. I saw a hedgehog and a cat playing Aww. in the road together. In the road. That might not have lasted very long. Well, I, I didn't hit them. No, no, I know you wouldn't. <laughs> of course, you wouldn't be telling the story if you'd accidentally killed a hedgehog. No, no. I have to say, I am besotted with hedgehogs. Have you got any living in your... We have. Oh, have you? We call him Mr. Prickles. <laughs> of course we do. So, for those... <laughs> no, it Warning, just, it... don't push this while the machine is still going. Um, John, would you like to explain to everyone about your hedgehog house that you bought? Oh, I love my little hedgehog house. <laughs> but we try not to talk about how much it cost. So, obscene. what you bought... A fluffy hedgehog house. No, well, I bought... Mr. Prickles appeared in my front garden, okay, and stayed for an hour, right. maybe. At which point... Maybe an hour and a half. Before Mr. Prickles had head off to leave off to in his merry way, um, I may or may not, you can decide, have ordered a colossal amount of hedgehog... Paraphernalia. That's what I'm going to call it. Yeah, everything. So the hedgehog had a fluffy house to live in inside his new house. He had hedgehog food, he had hedgehog bowls, because obviously hedgehog bowls have to be a certain height so they don't drown in them. I never knew. Can I, not I didn't know that hedgehog food needed certain vitamins as well. And all I'll say is I've got some very, very full slugs in my house, because slugs love hedgehog food. Do they? And I hate slugs. Oh no. <laughs> Awkward. So that's what we were looking for. Oh, hang on. So Mr. Prickles has actually come back and deigned to live in Mr. Prickles' house. He did. But then he disappeared. But that's quite normal, apparently, for hedgehogs, that they come in and come out. Now all you're going to do is you're going to sew two together. I'm going to do two and two, and then we're going to do that one in the middle. And in theory, in theory, they should be the same. Okay. In theory. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we're doing them together because if they go the wrong way, it doesn't really matter as long as you're stitching them the correct way. Okay. If that, oh gosh, that made no sense whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Prickles. So, do you think he'll hibernate in your. Um... Do you think I'll what? Do you think he'll hibernate? I hope so. Oh, there you go. No, okay, so it's okay because slugs are protein rich. Yep. And one of their preferred foods for hedgehogs. It says so we have a deck. The food the... of the hedgehog in England. Hedgehogs catch and roll the slugs with their front legs. Perfect. Oh, until they lose most of their well, I'll say, mucus. I can oh, safely say that my. After that, they become digestible. That's gross. What's that? Um, hedgehogs roll slugs until they lose the mucus. 
and then they become digestible. Oh, eat them. yeah, nice. So you are inadvertently helping the hedgehogs with their um, protein by providing b bitter vitamins for the slugs. Yeah. So the hit. Oh, okay. So don't. It's feel a crazy old world we live in. <laughs> it really is. It really is. I don't know where I managed to pluck the fact that slugs eat uh, hedgehogs eat slugs. But that is, uh, there you go. I think you've got That's an impressive brain that just holds a lot. Yeah, could it hold something useful? I mean, that's, that's what we Did I just like. snort? Actually <laughs> snorted? I think I did. I think I actually did. Oh, so what we've got right. here is our row one and two, which is the wrong way round. That is down here. So that is now going to be sewn onto here. So that's that section over there. <laughs> He's snorting Cole Morgan. Happiness. Gosh, wouldn't be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> you must not be rude about your mother, John. You must not be rude about your mother. John. Oh, hang on. What do wild hedgehogs eat? Which one? Which one? Which one? Je oh. The most important invertebrates in their diets are worms, beetles, slugs, caterpillars, earwigs, and millipedes. Good oh, fabulous! Freak. I want more hedgehogs. Do you know what it's like there? I on wish a... they ate spiders. My word! I'm sure they would if they. Got we have close. got lots of spiders in my little house at the minute. Right. So you can now see you've got one and two going on to three, four, and five. They're like keto We're hedgehogs, almost there. aren't they? Keto hedgehogs. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Atkins diet hedgehog. Next you're going to tell me Could they're vegan. Could you call him Mr. Atkins? Oh, hang on. Is a slug considered meat? Yeah. It is, okay. What else would you call it? It's not I a vegetable. I don't know. I'm not a vegan, <laughs> so I don't know what you can and can't eat. You're a vegan? No. I'm not a vegan. Oh, Are you mad? Vegan. I'm South African. I'd be, they'd take my passport away from me. I was going to say, do I we can't have a bri. My goodness. What would my life be? I say I can't have gin and tonic. It's like I can't add, raid Andrew's wardrobe. I'm sure we can get vegan gin. Right. Oh, hey, oh. And oh, and there we go. Is it We've right? got a block. Yay! So at this point you realise that that bit's wrong and you've got to unpick the whole thing. No. But it's not. No, we're Now, not. I won't deny, at this point, I'm bored. I'm oh. bored, I'm not going to press it, open, I'm going to the side. So you do what works for you, I just can't right now, that's me, <laughs> I'm bored now, just I've made an happens. error, I've unpicked, I'm bored, I'm irritated because the block didn't work the first time. You need time. snacks, that's what I that's need food, I need chocolate, I need a gin and tonic, and I need Andrew to buy a new shirt that I could steal from him. So, um, normal day in the normal uh, day in my drunk household. Yep. Morgan household, then, really. <laughs> my world is never changing. <laughs> right, so we have now made the block, and at well this done. point, God willing, this isn't going to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> made with confidence. I did it! It's the right way round! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Sorry. It's almost as if I should know what I'm doing, given it's my okay. pattern. How long ago did you write the pattern, John? Yes, dear. <laughs> Any day now. Any day now. <laughs> Amazing. All oh, right. Not actually really great. Uh, uh, no, there we go. Not, not true. So all I'm doing now is I'm putting this block to the block next to it, just like I did previously. And there's a logic to why I'm doing this now. Even if you can't quite see it yet. Oh, John, you've zhuzhed your... Uh you beautifully laid out block, I hate to tell you. Well, you did that, I know you did. Yeah, yeah, from here. <laughs> from there. From here. Yeah. So that, that would is make impressive, the bottom. Um, blowing Sorry. out of candles, wouldn't it, if I could, it really if would. I could do that from here. Do you know what, we don't do that anymore with, with the kids. You're not allowed to, are you? I don't know. I but don't we know don't. what you do anymore. But to be fair, we went years and years and years with people spitting all over your cake and you went back for more, so... It's just the icing I like, which is the bit that's going to spat on as well, well, which is um, even worse. To be fair... Do you know what I saw in How Much the other day? Um, <laughs> M&S. <laughs> we did M&S. They do Colin the Caterpillar in a jar as a cake. In a jar. 
So you can have as many as you like, people can do what they like, but it's in a jar, so it's completely hermetically sealed. Right, so this hermetic is the... Hermetic Colin. A hermetic Colin. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to move this to here. What can possibly go wrong? I don't know. I feel like we need... You should, you could See, you've the got your own ro cutting rotating mat. cutting mat here. Just a large size. Yeah. So... Yeah. No, no Collins for ages. What we oh, are... Collins the one. We had a whole load of calamity <laughs> over having a Collins. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> you did have a Collins. Because my friend's now. husband's called Colin. <laughs> well, my friend is called Colin. So that is what we're looking for oh, yes, to do there. Colin. There we go. Okay, so I'm now going to stitch this bit on here. Beautiful. Um, I'm going to put that to the bottom because it's slightly larger than the top. Um. So this is a tip you can tell this piece that I've got here is a little bit bigger than this bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it off here and then ease this excess in as I go along. I may miss a point. I don't care. I would rather have everything fit together than worry about a point. If you want to go and pin everything beautifully, please, by all means, you do that. I'm not. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm right, it doesn't mean I'm wrong, but it doesn't mean I am. I love wrong. how much you're enjoying this quote today, John. I love it. No, I do. I do. <laughs> I love it. Right. Oh so if I have got a little bit of excess to lose, what I do is I start it off and then I get the excess in the middle there and I split the difference by putting it halfway between the middle. And also, if you put the... Um, looser side to the bottom. That's what I've done. As well. So at this point when it's down I then line everything up and then I give it a good old tug. Do you want to go into over? Uh, I don't know whether the close-up will show it. I give that a good old tug and what happens is the feed dogs at the bottom suck in a little bit more fabric than it does at the top and that kind of eases the excess in as you go along. It's not really commensurate to having very good points doing that. So you've just got to be comfortable the way you're doing it. Okay. kind of feeling your concentration well at this point I'm at I've got it this far That's I want to kind of push it over the edge without making too many boo-boos right we're on the last stretch now It's a warts and all seam, if ever there has been. Yay! Okay. So we have now created that central section over there, and you can't really tell that extra seam. And then over here, you can see I've got three 10 and a half inch squares, which are these strip sets that I've created over here. And I'm going to put that down in the border. And then the central section of this quilt is completely finished at the Yay! point this goes on. Yeah, so there was a cat and a hedgehog playing yeah. in the road. Where were you? Um, I was um, I was just leaving Gemma's house, early Aww. doors, to get into work. And um, and it wasn't, I, I wasn't seeing things. I mean, we had had a gin the night before, but, you know, just one. And, um, yeah, 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 they were playing in the road together. Oh, I and love that. And it reminded that. me of when I had my great Dane Eric and he yeah. first saw a hedgehog. And he dug up half our lawn because he couldn't actually... Figure out where he'd gone. Well, no, it wasn't that. It was that it kept prickling his nose every time he went near it. Oh! So instead he just barked around it and dug up the lawn. Oh, bless him. Which um, he did quite a lot in the early days. 
which is quite a lot of digging. Indeed. Mm. He did eventually grow out of it, but he never grew out of the habit of going through the laundry, the dirty <laughs> laundry, and parading around with various bits of underwear. Oh, that's funny. I well, think, it's fine until you I think run some a women can. S some men do that as well, don't they? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Mine's very well trained. <laughs> You do at home with your own. Oh own. no, I don't. Oh no, dear. <laughs> no, dear. You have me very mistaken with someone else. Oh. Right. So we have <laughs> now, on that it. note, <laughs> we have now created the central section going from here all the way to the bottom. Perfect. And that is the colourway. I don't know what we've oh, called this colourway. Beautiful. But it is really beautiful, that. But and then you've like got these frosty. two extra sections over here which will go down here, and then we've got this block as well. So, so I'm going to talk you through this block. I'm not going to make it because it is incredibly complicated. <laughs> and no, well, it's, I don't want to do it on the machine and mess it up, and then we've wasted the fabric. Fine, fine. So when you make this block, the first thing you're going to do is these two as flying geese. Right. So you're going to take that little piece of fabric there. You're going to line it up with the... So this is completely square along there and along there, and you're going to stitch it on. I'm going to do it, aren't I? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Sure. What have I done with the mat? The iron mat. I don't know. What have you done with it? Great what skill, have you done I tell with you. It? Where did it go? How on earth did I do that? Is it in the quilt? It did you fold it up in the quilt? No. I don't think so. Nope. Where's it gone? It must have gone in a box. Where's it gone? It must have gone in a box down <laughs> there. Oh gosh. Where, where you would then it? have an iron <laughs> <laughs> and you would press that down. In all seriousness, where, where did that go? It? it has to have fallen that way. But it hasn't. It's underneath. Oh, John, you've hidden it from yourself. Oh, you. <laughs> if I had a brain, I'd be dangerous. So you press that open <laughs> as you go along. Oh, it is a carry on carry quilting, on quite quilting. right, quite nice. right. So that's what we're going to end up with over there. Do you want to do an overhead? Oh, I Thank don't know. Is it safe? <laughs> So we've done that bit over there. We're then going to put another green bit over here, but you can tell exactly like before, we're going to line up this seam and that seam and stitch through the middle of that. <laughs> okay. Now what you're looking for over here is your sorry oh, would we'll, you want to go close up i think please. on that one john what you're looking for here is that that crisscross of the seam over there is exactly the same all the way around so that would be ideal if you don't get it right that's fine just know that's what you're looking for okay okay and if your block is bigger than it needs to be you're fine we can make it work Right, so again, I've pressed my seams open and I'm just holding that down as I do that. So you've now got your first flying geese, okay? Yay! So what we're going to do next, now that you've got your flying geese, we're going to put some little bits on the side. So these two little bits are going to go on the side. Now when you line these up, you're going to put these one on top of the other and you're going to line up this seam and this seam here that the fabric's identical and then do a quarter of an inch down there okay, okay. We can do that. now I say we. We if this doesn't here. work please remember i am standing up using somebody else's machine oh john you've got all the excuses that and i'm not very good in it <laughs> <laughs> now to save my time of ironing i know that that's correct i'm happy with that so I'm just going to sew this bit onto there as well. So Perfect. exactly like before, you're lining up this side and that side. So it's flying geese with twiddly bits. Exactly. There we go. And then made into a giant flying goose, geese. Yeah, you see, I struggle with that because it's, still, it's still flying geese even when it's just one. 
Okay, so that's where we are now. And now you're just going to... I always set my seams in this way, but because the seams are open, I make sure I press from the back to make sure that everything that's meant to be flat stays flat. Okay, and then I press my seam open. Okay. Nice. So at this point, you've mm -hmm. now got a, I don't know what you would call that shape, but there we go. Somebody who's good at geometry can know. <laughs> All you do now is you take that and you I fold it in half. Yeah. You're looking to make sure that these pointy bits here are lined up and you just get a half mark in the middle over there. Okay. okay? Then you're going to take this triangle is going to be sewn onto that. Right. So we plop that on the top here, but is that again. A term? Sorry? Plopping it on the top. Plopping it on, <laughs> yep. But now I folded that wrong sides together because what happens then is when I nestle them in, you can tell that there's a dip. So you can see the two of them have merged into each other there. So then I know that I've got a quarter of an inch hanging off there and a quarter of an inch hanging off there. So I sew a quarter of an inch down the side. Now, if I get this right, I will be astonished. <laughs> and if I don't, I'm going to be kind, and not freak out and eat my body weight in chocolate. Is that, is that? Why I have to lose 30 kilos, yes. <laughs> That's quite a lot of quilting, John. <laughs> Okay, so you know you've done it right if that seam hits that little white dot there mm -hmm. and if this is exactly in the middle. Now, this isn't, and I can see my seam is too skinny, so I'm going back in and I'm going to do it at a quarter of an inch. Okay. And you can just do that, it's not oh. the end of the world. So oh. if we can do a close-up. You want to do oh, a close-up now, don't you? No, so you you've right. done it. So you can see I've hit my seam there perfectly. The second seam that I've done has gone in brilliantly there. And there's a little bit of schmutz over there, but that's okay. And you then press this open again. And in theory, you have a giant triangle with no bumpy sides. Nice. In theory. Tension mounts. John. Bom, bom, bom. We need to know. Oh, I'm not. I'm quite happy with that. Oh, hang on, I've got it on a close up. Oh, close up. If you're happy with it. Hey. That's what we're looking for. And what I meant by that is that these should be in a straight line. Right. Now, if you want to clear your dog legs off now, do that with pleasure. Absolutely. And then we're just doing another flying goose where I put that there. So you just keep adding and to that it. There. Exactly. Oh, Okay. So it's exactly that. I'll do these as well so you can see what they look like. Perfect. You're on a roll now. Oh, wow. You can have it done before you know. I might John. have to do these standing up on this machine for the rest of the quilt. <laughs> do you know, it feels really weird for me now to sit down and sew. Oh, I, I'm not enjoying this, I won't deny. I love sitting down and sewing. Do you? I love it. But I'm quite lazy. I've got a little corner and a little niche organised for it. Oh, perfect. That's what oh, we're looking for we there. Hang on, hang on. There we go. Oh, you lovely. You can see how that point has just hit over there. That's just perfect. That's what we're looking for. And exactly like before, pressure seams, and then I'm pressing this open. Oh. Oh. Um, I wouldn't recommend steam with any bias edges. Definitely not. No. I wouldn't move a thing. You literally just nuzzle your nose down and then just hold it down until it's done. Because you can see already this has started to bend just in that little movement there. So you need to be really, really cautious with these. Okay, and then this is exactly the same. You line that up there and you stitch a quarter inch down that line, ideally hitting that point like we did on the other side. Okay. 
If you don't, that's okay. And you repeat this going round the block, Exactly. You? Yeah. And you've got to make four of these, mm -hmm. so you'll need to make 16 of these in total. Okay. And you can tell I've hit that seam perfectly there. Oh, well done. And that's what job. you're making. Perfect. Now, if you want to see how this looks in the actual quilt over here... Oh, hang on. My hang head's on. probably in the way. No, I've just crashed again. <laughs> Bear with, bear with, do you want to be, be back in a it. second? <laughs> it's always in that moment. Oh, so you can see that plops in over there, and you can see it goes in there, and you're putting these then around the block as you go along. It's a really lovely block to make, but it is does take a bit more a bit more time, a bit more energy, a bit more concentration. It but is a little bit more nice challenging. To do. That's the next exactly. step up, isn't it? If we exactly. just did, you know, and I think it's important to be challenged at times. And this is challenging, but if you break it down, that you're making, if you just start with these four over here, these three over here, making those, you can do that. It's doable. And you can easily put two little triangles on the end. Yeah. You can easily put a triangle on the top. Okay, now we've got a triangle and you're just doing flying geese. You're doing the same thing again. So I think when you break it down as simply as that, it makes life a little bit easier. It doesn't sound quite so intimidating. It is how do you eat an elephant, isn't it? Exactly, one, one bite little bite at a, time. at a time. That's it, perfect. And, and now that I've done that, I can pack these all away while the <laughs> lovely <laughs> Natasha comes up to show you the kits, which is how we should have started the show. You well, can see you know why what? I don't I think, do this for a living, don't you? I think what we can really see is just the colors that you've got in there so you got um, so you got the silver metallic bumbleberry um, I think it's three and a half meters of that which includes your binding you are getting a meter and a quarter of the uh, either the pink or the red so you're getting either the, the red here or you're getting the pink uh, in there, which is a metre and a quarter. And this is all the fan fabric. And they're all the, it's the Melba collection, isn't it? It is, yeah. So the Melba collection was um, the remit for Lisa when she did the Melba collection was what would happen if Dame Nellie Melba and William Morris had a night together? What would the fabric love child be? And that is the Melba collection. It's a little so, bit special, I have to say. It is really special. And, and so I have you've to got say, all the I fans, the Art Deco-y type fans in there. They're just gorgeous. But I've worked with a lot of fabrics, and I have to say that this is one of the nicest fabrics to work with. Because some of them, you know, you get really lovely fabrics with metallic on, and you're a bit like, mm, really? Because really? it's soft, it's not scratchy. And it is. It's not, it hasn't got that scratchy feel to it. It's and just that lovely, soft elegance to it. You have come back to us for the last two years since we started stocking it and bought it again and, and again, again and, and again, again and, and hopefully you're going to buy this and the pattern fantastic john i think we can see what's in the kits because you've we've worked with them so you can see that you're going to get your bumbleberries you're going to get your red fans and your green fans it's a really nice simple kit and the and kit then, does include the binding as well so you'll have enough for your binding more perfect. than and there was still quite a bit left over as well so you can do cushions and if you want to play around and you want to do you don't want to leave these empty you can put extra blocks in there as well you should have enough fabric but make your quilt first before you start playing around yeah no absolutely um but the other thing to say is of course that have a look I mean you can see on our um, on the sides there you can see just some of Lisa's fabrics so and pretty. have a good rummage through and um, and take advantage of the cracking deals that we've got on Lisa's fabrics well, it's today rude not to. because we can't hold it no like that for very long so do check those out make the most of those make this quilt this quilt is on a cracking price as well um, Big fat discounts all around. We do like to do that for you. It's got to be done. And yeah, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. I know it's not Christmas, but anyway. <laughs> Every day is Christmas for, Christmas for me. Possibly. Or, do you know what? The silver one in Emily's bedroom all year round. Perfect. Just perfect. It is. And I know I called it Christmas sparkle, but it's a case of it's just the sparkle. It's beautiful. Because the fabrics just shine. It's wonderful. John, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And this is www.natashamakes.com. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.